Hey, what's up everybody? I hope you're having an amazing day. So I got a video today about some of the tips and tricks that I wanted to share with y'all about our pop-up camping. See, if you've been watching the vlog, you've seen us share stuff like walking tacos and like awesome little places to go and camp. But along the way, me and Samantha found some things that you guys should probably know. Things that have made our lives easier and things that are just part of the camping world that you probably haven't thought about yet. So I'm gonna do my best to give you the quickest version of this, but I don't know how long it'll take, so you'll just have to stick with me till the end to figure out something that you might have missed along the way. So every year, me and Samantha pop up the camper and we give it a quick walk around to see maybe what might not be working still and what the humidity of it being boxed up might have affected. And check those little sticky parts that we need to put some lubrication on because a pop-up camper is really only as good as its best moving part. Nothing will run your day faster than a flat tire or the crank on your pop-up camper breaking, or a slide out breaking, which if you saw that video, I had a slide break and it wound up ending our entire weekend. See, we pulled our camper everywhere from Fort Pickens to Big Lagoon to Vortex Springs to Orlando. We've been around the state of Florida and a lot of these little parks quite a bit. It's been a ton of fun. And I think it would probably be one of the best investments you make if you ever get to jump into it. But let's get started from the top. First thing you gotta do when you pop up the camper is you gotta check your electrical. The electrical box, the outlets, and even your tail lights, because these things have a tendency to just going out at weird times. True story, me and Samantha actually had our electrical box catch on fire last year. That was a weird story. Samantha came over with Baxter and was like, Jack, camper's on fire. I go up there, it's smoking. And one of the breakers had actually caught on fire. See, long story, but the screw on the back of the breaker box had wiggled itself like loose from all the years of just bouncing down the road. And it shorted, caught fire. Good thing we had a fire extinguisher. But that's my big reason of checking the electrical because sometimes things do weird stuff when they've been boxed up for a while and your camper's about 30 years old, which ours is 2007 model, so it's, it's kind of old. And if it wasn't for me having a little toolbox in the back and a camper next to me that actually had another breaker and then I had some wire in the back of the truck, weekend might have been over. Just like when our tire popped that time. But I'm gonna talk about the tire popping later on in the show. The next thing we gotta talk about is AC units. Guys, you gotta run these things before you actually take them out there. So pop your, your camper up like we're doing here and run it just with like uh, an extension cord for 20 or 30 minutes because the wasps happen to love to make nests and the little drain pan in your AC unit and it will come straight through the ceiling, straight into the floor and your entire weekend will be about shoveling water out the back door of the camper or is it the front door? So just check on that, dirt daubers too. And that goes for two on the electrical plug up to the 30 amp breaker, the out electrical or the in electrical. The electrical plug that you use for your RV camp or your pop-up camper, that one, things love to like make nests in, get dirty, get corroded. The thing, like I've changed mine out twice because the one I've get hot or they'll melt or it's the same on the plug to your truck. That one will get dirty and corroded and you'll be driving down the road with no lights. It's happened, all these things are things that happen. But I did a video on the AC unit clean out. I'll try to like link it down below or at the end of this video, if you're trying to figure out how to fix your AC from leaking. Um, it's an old video, but hopefully it takes you through the things that I learned fixing it. All right guys, so the next one, maintenance. We gotta talk about maintenance and it's kind of a long category. But if it moves, it's metal, or it has any type of ability to deteriorate, you gotta check it. Ball bearings, you gotta check the your trailer hitch, you gotta check like even the, the, the thing that holds the propane tank on the front of your, your camper, you gotta check the jack stands, the stands that like lower down and hold your camper like stable while you're in it and using it. Check those things, because they get corroded and they won't come down or they're really hard to come down. Last thing you wanna, not, wanna do is get out there and only two of them come down or they won't go back up and you gotta pull the trailer somewhere. So even the little thing that goes like this, it goes up and down and you know basically allows you to put your trailer down and you know come off your truck, that thing will get stove up. So you just gotta use a lot of WD-40 everywhere or some whatever your preference of lubrication is. On the slides on your camper, I have some like slide lube 
Um, I'll put it right here. Um, this stuff works pretty good because WD-40 and some of the lubricants will actually like evaporate and it won't stay on there very long because they're not made to lube. But this stuff will hang around for a while. The cables on your pop-up camper are a must to lubricate. Keep them like protected because it's just, you know, metal cable. I forget. It, this stuff will actually rust and it'll deteriorate. And then on your floor where the crank is, you got to take all the cabinets out and you've got to like put lots of lube on this thing <laughs> because it will, uh, it, it, it'll just, you know, get real dry and wind up breaking your cables. You have cable uh, pulleys on all four points of your pop-up camper. Lubricate those too because they have to actually move. Try not to get the lubrication on the floor because the solvent and all the grease and uh, the stuff in the actual lubricant could deteriorate the floor of the camper. FYI, the the plywood. Um, you gotta be frail with that stuff because you don't want to have to replace that when the crank comes flying out of the floor of the camper. That's just not a good road to go down. Just like when your camper's top, uh, when the cables pop, that one's not a good one to go down. So just prevent it by lubricating and checking it frequently. Next, just do a quick rundown of your canvas. Walk it around and see if it's got any tears. When you're making the stuff, when you're popping the camper up and down, sometimes it'll get tears. Things will like be outside or, you know, somebody could clip it, just walk along in the middle of the night. The, the mosquito netting, uh, the netting on the, on the canvas can get a little cut, bothered, whatever. I've actually used shoe goo to fix some of uh, the canvas problems, if it's small, it'll make it watertight and it'll still allow it to flex. You can put some super glue. Uh, the netting, you know, going around, I've actually just, you know, uh, sewed it up with fishing wire and put a little super glue on it and rock steady. You know, like it just depends on how you want to go about it and how big the tear is. They actually make, make tear packets that I keep in the camper in case I got to fix a tear. But don't forget to check your gas lines. Just let it run. Like maybe like start up your grill before you go out too, because if you don't have your gas lines attached to the to the actual tanks themselves air can get in them it'll take a little while to start and you gotta let that air kind of run out and dirt daubers and ants and all kinds of weird stuff like to get in the gas lines so just make sure you don't have any leaks things like that just a quick little look over but for us and this is kind of like the 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 end part of actual years of doing the pop-up camping is to stay minimal. Me and Samantha have gone through the full circle of camping. We went from like not bringing a lot to bringing a lot to back to not bringing a lot. So like when we popped the camper, our goal was to get everything out that we didn't use and kind of talk about it. Something that we didn't think of in the beginning was how many pots and pans we have in the camper. I would say get an average universal saucepan, so something like this, just one, and then one pot, one saucepan like this, and that's it. That's it. You don't need all of these different variety of pots and pans. They just take up space. Now, if you plan ahead and you know what you're going to cook and you need something bigger, you can bring it ad hoc. But to leave in the camper, you probably only need one of each. Universal sizes. All right, what's a must have? So the first must have in a camper, I would say all are these foil oil pans for cooking. Now you might think, oh, I'll just get a, a little tray or something like that. But when you're camping, you do not want to do dishes. So we always have these foil pans in the camper. So a lot of this stuff was in the camper when we bought it and we've never really opened the cabinets to really go through it. So after all these years, we've kind of decided what we need and what we don't need. So we're getting rid of all the stuff we don't because like a magic bullet. We've never we used it. it in the camper. It's just taking up space. Sounds like a great idea. Um, like, oh yeah, I can make smoothies in the camper. It's it's not like that when we camp. So, no magic bullet. <laughs> There's also like wine and all kinds of like random utensils. But we're trying to be minimalistic. It makes our life a lot easier. Yep. There's games in here. We'll probably leave the games. Yep. Um, They're good for rainy days. That's right. So I thought in the beginning I wanted to do these kind of dishes and then wash them when we were camping. And I still do like to do that. It depends on who we're going with and if it's just Jack and I. But we also keep paper plates in the camper. 
Um, those are a lot easier than washing all these dishes. So you probably don't have to keep real dishes in the camper. It's not a must have, but at least some paper plates are a must have. I'm still undecided if I'm leaving these in here. I have new cushion covers. Uh -oh. So I bought chair, chair back covers. People recommended to cover your camper cushions or do a mini remodel. Uh-oh, mini remodel. Yay. Putting them on? Yep. I took these off, so this was what it looked like before. Not terrible, but not us. Let's see if this sucker fits. It's like giant pillow uh, cases. Yeah. Oh, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Pretty clean. And then you can just take the back off, so like, what does the back look like? Yeah. Oh, and then you just take them off? Yep, take them off to wash them, yeah, just in case you spill. And Anything like that, getting dirty. Where'd you get it from? Amazon. I just ordered, there's actually dining room chair backs. There we go, look at that. That's way easier. It's like instant makeover. <laughs> instant makeover. We'll have to do the link for these in the description box. Yeah, and they have so many colors. I think there were like 32 colors or something. We went with navy just because it was a color in here, so. Okay. I think a strainer is definitely a must have. Even if you're just rinsing out coffee mugs or dishes, um, pots and pans, so we always have this strainer. Yeah, we use it all the time. Yep, must have. <laughs> Heavy. Must have is a microwave, not this big of a microwave. This was given to us, so we have kept it, but we probably need to downsize to a smaller microwave for the camper. Lots of junk in there. I know. Let's see what's a must have. Koozie. Must have. These clips are must haves. They hang our lights. Oh, cute. Salt and pepper shaker. First aid kit. Yep, gotta have that one. Tear aid. Yep. You never know when you're gonna rip something. See, these are little lights. Good lights. Yep. Oh, uh, that uh, electrical outlet thingamabobber. Must have. Yep. They're cheap and they go a long ways. Always have a lighter. Yep. Not quite a must have. Only if we're going on long camping trips. So these are wipes. Always prepared wipes. You never know. Potty packs. So just in case of emergency. Oh, that's oh, a converter. That's got, definitely a yeah, must have. Yeah, you gotta have one of those. You never know when uh, you might not have a 30 amp or you might have some weird connection. Extra screws. You always need something like this because you never know when you're gonna break something or strip something out or... That's probably a must tech, have. Yeah. Another must have, and I stress this for the guys out there, is a tool kit. Always bring extra tools. Have like, it's even smart to just get a little tool, multi-use toolbox like you get with, you know, screwdrivers and, you know, maybe a little drill, a light, uh, some wrenches, just the random universal tools because campers, you really don't notice what's wrong with it or will break or whatever when you're out there. Like it, it could be not just you that have an issue that breaks, it could be one of your camping friends next door and they're like, hey, do you have this tool my whatever just broke? Or like these slides right here on the camper could pop out or you could lose a screw that holds the the vinyl down like there's just random things that you need to fix sometimes or your electrical box could uh have some issue like we had our little uh breaker box in our camper go out one time and it was just a little wire burnt but i needed some wiring tools just to you know fix the breaker and the wire and it was a simple fix but i had to like really scrounge around scrounge all around in my is that word scrounge all around in my truck to find the tools and, and a multi-tool and, and got it got going again borrowed a breaker from somebody else so like that's just an fyi big one yeah i didn't even know we had that in there 
We found it's it. It's fresh. Though. It's Still not been fresh. opened. Never been opened. Something to hold your dog with. That's a key right there. Okay. Or it'll hold your awning down. That's right. Got lots of games. Lots of games, card games, dominoes. Oh, five hour energy. Hey, you never know when you need to go with that one. It's When's expired. It? Dang. Oh, That's still got color and we can do there. We got any crayons? Uh, that might actually be fun. Cord? Oh, extension cords. You need lots of extension cords. I got them all underneath in this bin right here. Not a must have. No. What about those ballet slippers? These are just slippers. Oh. Like, you know. For, They're very glamorous. For cold nights, you need to have your slippers. Checkers, big checkerboard. Big checkerboard. Is that the checkerboard? This is the checkerboard. That's a cool one. We need to play that. Tic-tac-toe. We have right here. What we got? Oh, we found crayons. <laughs> we found crayons. Really yeah. wondering if we didn't have crayons. What is that? These are must have. These are our, um, sun shields for the top of our bunks on the camper. Yeah, it really keeps the, the the canvas from letting the heat in and it keeps in the winter the heat getting out. Yeah, I think it's an emergency blanket. Yeah, it's like a survival blanket, get I think. Get them on Amazon. Yeah, I'll put the links to it down below. They're like perfect size. Universal fans. Yeah, they hook up. Right there. There. It's also got a light in it. Flip paper. I have to pull a few layers off before we use this, but <laughs> it's a must have. What's that? These are Clemson hooks. Clemson hooks. A cutting board. Need a cutting board. Isn't that right? That's Gotta right. cut on something. We have this little caddy too, that's helpful. Just keep our uh, coffee filters, some unopened sauces, spices, you know, some of the utensils we use on a daily basis when we're camping yeah so and we leave it outside as like our little caddy we found this list to just keep growing because part of being a pop-up camper is you don't take a lot so we switched from a regular grill to an electric grill uh, this last year just because lugging the big grill around got to be kind of cumbersome and we really didn't have anywhere to put it charcoal is dirty and I wound up getting dust everywhere as I put it in the back of the truck. So we went to the electric grill and it's a lot more clean. It stores away in our little like little box area that we put all everything else, the coffee pot and everything stores away just nice. It sits right on top of the stove that we have for the pop-up camper in that little cubby hole along, right next to the microwave and the coffee pot. I'll try to link that grill below if I can find it just in case you want to kind of see what I'm talking about. So ice makers are one thing that some people like to take. Uh, we wound up taking our ice maker out just because we didn't need it. it. took up a lot of space and we just took our ice or there was usually ice to be purchased wherever we went. The trade-off of purchasing ice versus making ice was just one of those things that we didn't need to really do. We didn't need ice that much. We took it with us. And last but not least, we never really used our hot water heater. So uh, that takes up like most of the space in your little compartments in a pop-up camper. And since ours was old, um, we really don't need it. And I'm really thinking about taking it out and using that space. Uh, I've never really hooked it up to like any of the, the RV sites just simply because our sink, um, I haven't got around to fixing that. And there's always a sink or a shower or bathroom or places for us to do the dishes wherever we go. So we've never really needed to take, we've never really needed the idea of water in the camper. And I really don't wanna fool with it, clean it or maintain it. That's just a decision that you're gonna have to make. That's it everybody, those are my ideas and kind of my thought process on the camper in like one video. I get, a lot of, I get a lot of questions on this stuff, so I just wanted to put it out there for everybody, and maybe this helps somebody. So comment down below if you've got anything to add to this, so somebody that's just cruising along these videos might wanna know and you know share it with somebody. This is all about just sharing with people. So I'll see you guys later.